for Criminal Media's Policy, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today is political analyst Professor Raymond Satna to discuss the column titled Scandals Surrounding Besta and Makutumana Saka Illustrate State's Disintegration as Public is Left Vulnerable. So in this column, you say that you do not usually write about criminality and escapes. Why did you do so in this case? Yes, you know, I used to teach criminology long ago, before you were born. But um, what, what made me go back to it is that this is just not just crime. It also illustrates uh, the collapse of the capacity of the state in many respects. In regard to correctional services, they only announced that there has been an escape 10 months after it happened. Now, Ground Up, uh, who did fantastic work, everyone has acknowledged, Ground Up had told them about this long before this and had given information and they only announced it 10 months later. And the announcement was filled with warnings not to believe everything you read in the newspapers and don't pay attention to leaks. Uh, but they didn't say anything about uh, the public must be warned. And that to me is a really serious indictment of the security services, especially the police, that to this day, they have never warned the public about a rapist who was at large, not just for the people who had been raped by him before, but every woman has that had that danger. So it had a number of elements. Uh, it had a number of situations where the authorities did not seem to take it seriously. You have a situation where they're interviewing uh, La Mola, the Minister of Correctional Services, and he laughs. And he laughs when there's a situation where there's a complete collapse of correctional services uh, supervision of what's going on in Mangong prison. There's a situation where people try to give information to the police and the police uh, don't really seem to pay attention to it. And there's a situation where a former constitutional court judge believes that the only way of him getting something done is to leak information to ground up. Now, I don't think anyone can condemn Edwin Cameron for doing that. He was doing it because he was desperate to have something done. You're also saying that uh, the security authorities were irresponsible and incompetent. Is that not too harsh, Professor? And if there was irresponsibility, is it correct then uh, to lump SAPS together with G4S and correctional services, as you've just said? And what responsibility did SAPS have? Well, first of all, G4S were not autonomous. They fell under the Department of Correctional Services. So whatever was done by G4S, ultimately G4S didn't have to report to Parliament. It was the Department of Correctional Services that would have had to account for it. So it was up to them to find out what was going on. A fire breaks out in a maximum security prison, even if it's privately authorized, they needed to check it out. Some people say, oh, well, this shows that you can't have privately run prison. I also think it's a problem. But if, if you've got it, that doesn't mean that everything is handed over to them. In the case of the South African police services, they also were tipped off about an escape a long time ago. And ground up said to them, to whom do we give information because we've got information from our sources. They didn't even refer them to any particular individual. They just said, contact crime line. Now that to me is gross irresponsibility. That is to say, get on the line where you are told press one, press two, give your ID, and then the line goes dead, then you have to do it again. And I mean, that's not how a responsible security service behaves. I believe 
both of the ministers concerned are not competent for their job. Mm. And you also speak of state disintegration. Is that not an exaggeration? Well, it seems to me that even without talking about the security services, we have a number of situations where state capacity appears <laughs> to be disintegrating. The roads we drive on, the train service, which is collapsed ex except in parts of the Western Cape, I don't know where else, and somewhere near the mines. I think it's funded by one of the mining companies in uh, near Mpumalanga that they, the train service operates a little bit. But 20 years ago, lots of people used to go to work on the trains. They now pay more to go on taxis and things like that. So that's without the security services. But I don't feel safe. If you have a a uh, security service who have an escape and you have someone shopping in Woolworths in Sampton, you have someone hiring two huge properties in Hyde Park with uh, a woman who becomes his partner. Evidence seems to point to him having left the prison and spent the weekend, it's alleged, it hasn't been proved yet, but a lot of what's alleged is in this case ends up being proved, uh, spend the weekend or some days with Dr. Magudumana somewhere away from Bloomfield, and I think one case in Bloomfield. So it seems to me uh, there's chaos. These people are doing what they like, and the people who are employed to ensure the secure custody of Besta get involved in allowing him to conduct a business from his prison cell, business which entailed millions of rands together with Dr. Magadumana and uh, a lot of other things. And, and they turn off the CCD TV at the time of the uh, escape, et cetera, et cetera. All of this points to a situation where personally, I don't have confidence. I haven't for a long time had confidence in the SAPS my own personal experience is that they don't believe in nonviolence, uh, and that is my own experience, but I've seen it with other people as well. And lastly, Professor, you seem to have a problem now uh, with the media highlighting that uh, Dr. Makutumana could be charged for practicing after failing to pay a uh, membership fees. Why is that? You know, it's a problem when you see a headline that says, Dr. Dr. Nandipa may be charged. And then you read it, and the charge that they're talking about is that not that she's involved in fraud and that she's involved in helping the escape of Bester, not mm -hmm. that she's involved in getting bodies to go into the cell. The thing is that she didn't pay membership fees for two years. Now, that's not a serious crime. Because when you don't pay membership fees, they deregister you uh, in the health professional council for a couple of years. And if you continue practicing when you deregistered, you can be charged. Now, to make that a headline, you think when you read the headline that you're going to read about murder, uh, escapes, fraud, and all these things. So it was very irresponsible journalism in my view. There are other things. For example, they run a story exclusive, and it's a video interview with Bester telling how he didn't really mean to rape these people. He really liked them. They were humanizing him. Uh, and I don't believe it's the job of the media to humanize a person who is a serious convicted criminal. That, mm. to me, is not an exclusive story. It's a story that shouldn't have been on the newspapers. There was political analyst Professor Raymond Sadna in conversation with Polity discussing scandals surrounding Besta and Makutumana Saka illustrates states' disintegration as public is left vulnerable.